Hello everybody and welcome to the Murray Music YouTube channel. Stick around to watch how I gutted this old acoustic upright piano in order to replace it with an electric keyboard. So I have obviously the keyboard in here, also have dedicated power input, audio ins and outs, main power switch for the whole piano. I have onboard audio with some speakers and subwoofer, all controlled via one master volume knob. Integrated damper pedal that works with the new keyboard. Have a headphone amp for plugging in in-ears when you're playing this live. LEDs to light up this whole shelf and the keyboard area. And the extra mile is fully controlled DMX lighting on the back of the piano. So with all that out of the way, why don't you sit back and watch how I took an old, free, junky, acoustic upright piano and converted it into what we see here. All right, so I got the piano totally gutted here, which feels good. We got a nice, clean, blank slate to start going ahead and building back out this keyboard. Now, I tell you, it was really no big deal at all to get the keys out and the hammers and all that kind of stuff. And you could just do that, and you would have room to put a keyboard in here. But I think it's a lot better to go the full extra yard, get that big, heavy metal bracing out of here just to clean it up, lighten up the piano and all that. But be warned, it's a lot of extra work when you do that. And you definitely want the drill socket that fits the piano tuning pegs. Because if you do it by hand, you'll be doing it for the rest of your life. And what I need to do next is reinstall this piece of wood here that was going to hold my main keyboard. Only the keyboard I'm going to use is a little bit too long. So what I need to do is take off these cleats on here and cut them down so that that keyboard is going to fit perfectly inside of this shelf.
toys in here. What did you find? A light switch? So technically my foot switch sustain does work, but the switch I used in that is really loud. I'm not happy with that. I know it's going to drive me crazy just how loud that clicking is. So I'm going to go ahead and redo that to fix that problem. There's also just way too much travel in that pedal. So it has a big range between up and fully down and it just doesn't really feel too good. So we're going to fix both of those issues, get the pedal, I'd say working, but it's already working right now. But we're gonna keep it working and make it work a lot better. Now I got really excited when I found these bulbs. These are 12 volt DC dimmable Edison bulbs. And I thought that was gonna make this really easy. I could just use an LED DMX controller and use three of my channels RGB for that strip and the fourth channel to dim these bulbs. However, if you seemingly get the dimming just right or just wrong, these bulbs flicker like crazy, like that. Can you see that? I've tried just about everything I possibly can to make these bulbs work and they just don't. They're just not worth it. So I'm going to swap all of this over so that my bulb sockets, rather than being 12 volt DC, are just regular line voltage 110 AC and then I'm going to use a regular DMX dimmer pack in order to dim those. And with that I can basically use non-LEDs, just regular incandescent bulbs, which will just give me no fuss, no hassle, should be perfect dimming, and finally put this headache behind me. Now they gotta turn this off. Obviously when you're building a piano like this, you can do just about anything to tailor it for what you need, but that will ultimately depend on what you want it to do. Now some of the stipulations I had when building this piano out was I wanted to be able to use it without a computer, so I didn't just want a MIDI controller in there. So we went with the Core D1, which is a full 88 key weighted keyboard that can just give you basic piano sounds on its own without needing anything extra. So I can sit down at this piano, fire it up, play sounds straight from the speakers, not even needing to plug it into anything, and put some sheet music here on this shelf and play it just like I would a regular piano. Now if that's not a concern for you, then obviously you don't have to do any of that. But I also tried to build this so that it would work as a awesome all-in-one main stage rig. Now since I've taken so long to edit this video, I have the opportunity to give you a six month update on the piano and how we are using it. We have it most of the time hooked up to a main stage computer running through a little Behringer USB audio interface and going into this Rolls stereo mini mix here. So I can blend or switch between the keyboard audio or the computer audio real easy just with a knob right here. 
Thankfully, the other option that we have not had to use yet is if this computer crashed or froze on us or anything, you could just turn up the audio for the keyboard and keep playing and at least have some piano sounds to get you through the rest of the thing. Now at this point, there isn't really anything that I would change about this piano. I'm happy still with the way everything turned out. I went with a spin it piano to keep it nice and low profile, mainly so that you could see whoever was actually playing the piano. And in case I'm back here leading with a microphone, you don't have this big upright piano blocking my face. Now the disadvantage of that is if I had a taller upright piano, I could put the computer inside on this shelf and it would all be real hidden and neat which would be nice, but then it would be more of this imposing structure up here instead of being a smaller piano. Now it's hard enough to crawl around in here and wire everything up, let alone get good footage of what was going on in there. So if you wanna see more about how it's all wired and laid out, make sure you go to the website article linked in the description below, and that'll show you all kinds of details and pictures and some schematics and all that kind of stuff of how this piano is set up as well as links to all of the things I purchased to make this piano possible. Well, thank you so much for making it this far in the video. That means you probably obviously liked this project and you should make sure to give this video a thumbs up to let me know that you liked it. But otherwise, make sure to subscribe and not miss out on any future projects like this one when they come out. But otherwise, have a wonderful day and I will see you next time.